So I did not make auditioning for the band very easy for people. Like most people think like you just grab your instruments, you jam in a garage and that's it. I actually cared a lot about the people we were bringing in because I want to make sure it was a cultural fit as well as like people who um, were able to like have the skill. So I, for people who wanted to audition for my band, they would have to fill out a two to four page questionnaire on our website with multiple choice questions and essay questions, everything from like uh, why you're interested in, in the band, what your goals were to your dietary preferences. Cause you know, touring had to be manageable. Uh, after they filled out that form, we would take the kind of top people who we thought were a good fit and I would bring them in and they would audition with the band, but um, we would make them learn four songs of ours and play on stage with us. Uh, to, we would rent out a music venue. And so it'd be completely empty except for a camera in the middle of the room. And we would film their audition and they got one shot to do a four song set with us so that they could be judged on their performance, uh, their live stage presence and so on. And then after that, they would sit down to a group interview uh, to see if we could get along and if our values were aligned and that sort of thing. So, um, People had to go through a, a lot, a lot more than your typical band audition. And for some people, if they were married or they had a significant other, they would be invited for another interview where we would sit down with our respective spouses or significant others as well to say, like, this is what you're signing up for. This is how long they're going to be on the road. This is what you have. the spouse has to deal with. Are you on board with this person getting this attention or being gone for this long? And, and so... Um, it was pretty rigorous in terms of like what, what people had to go through. Well, being the manager of the band, this was really, these were things that you had to think about because touring life isn't just about, can you play guitar or can you sing? It's how do you get along with people and what kind of person are you going to be 24 seven, you know, throughout the year? Yeah. And, and, you know, really that's the most important thing. It's kind of like, I, I think maybe I, unconsciously was thinking about how business is higher right like we talk about hard skills and so-called soft skills but really the people that thrive in any organization are those who have a cultural fit like they can get along with everybody and they actually um, have an alignment in terms of values and priorities because someone might be a really, really great programmer, but if they're horribly misogynistic and they're joining an all-women group, it's not going to work out really well. Like you want to make sure that people can get along and uh, that you, I mean, especially with a band, you're around them 24-7. Like you are in the same vehicle together. We oftentimes share the same hotel. You're on stage. So it was very seldom that you could time to yourself. You had to be around people for weeks and sometimes months at a time. And if you couldn't be around them for just a short time period, you knew it was not gonna work out. Yeah, yeah, it's all about chemistry. And I've been told I've done two national tours myself uh, for musicals and it's, it's the same thing that I've heard that the audition process is as much, yes, can you sing it, can you dance it, do, you know, whatever's required artistically, but then personality wise, do they like you in the room? is this director going to want to work with you and feel like they can direct you and, and choreograph you or whatever. So the, yeah, that chemistry aspect of it is definitely important. Yeah. Nobody wants to be hanging out with a diva all day long. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or vice versa, someone who just keeps themselves, won't talk is in the corner. Yeah. You, you need to have someone who's engaged. Yeah. And so it was a big part of our, our process at, um, especially, later on like the, the more high profile our band got because like we weren't just being judged for our music like we were judged for, like in our interviews like to the point where the government would sometimes take quotes of ours and use them against us so i needed people who could also like represent themselves and represent our group in a way that uh, wasn't going to be used against us legally and you know we were doing all these workshops on diversity and inclusion and we were doing anti-bullying campaigns and I wanted like kids to be able to see our band members and, and, and look at us and think like, oh, like that's 
someone like who's modeling behavior that I like, you know, that's appropriate. It, it, it was, there were so many factors to consider beyond can you rock out on stage? And so I assume obviously representation, Asian culture, wherever they happen to be from, that was a part of it to see how they fit in with, with you guys, but then also in representing Asians in general. Yeah. I mean, for, for better or worse, we wanted to hear their story. Like, and that's why I asked, like, what is your goal with the band? Like, why do you want to be in this group? Do you, do you just want to be like a famous musician or do you want to change the culture? Uh, because how people approach that will look very different um, both on and off stage. And I just wanted to make sure that people that were coming in knew the work that we were actually involved in. Like it might be a dance rock band up on front and it, you know, we would say ridiculous things like, Oh, we're going to melt people's faces with rock and roll and that kind of thing. But that was part of the fun around it. But you know, the reality is that, we were uh, a force of arts and activism, and we were trying to do things that were much greater than the music itself. And that required people who could accept that and understand it. And, and I think it's hard for, for a lot of the folks who are auditioning to really understand it, even though we told them up front. It's not so you're actually in it and, you're, and you see day to day like what it's like, because like, they would say, oh, you, you got this really big, busy touring calendar. I'm like, yeah, but in the daytime, we're doing workshops. We're, we're, we're leading these seminars. We're doing lectures and other things. Like, it's, it's not your typical band. And so what was it like for the auditioners? Obviously, I'm sure there were some that could play beautifully and wonderfully, and they, were, and they had great stage presence, but there may have been other parts of it that just didn't mesh with the band. So... I assume it was hard to let go of some of those people. I, I mean, to be fair, most of the people were really great. And um, what ended up being the most difficult thing was people who could take enough time off uh, to, to basically live on the road, especially in the last couple of years that we were doing this. I mean, we were doing, um, you know, in 2019, I think I had 200 appearances in, in the year. So it's... It's just making sure that people like people were prepared for that and that their lifestyle was aligned. Um, so that that was probably the biggest thing that, that did distinguish folks. And the other thing was just like the the chemistry part. I think most people, especially like you know, we we're auditioning Asian American musicians. Like they had similar stories to us. They 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 had felt the sting of racism on stage and off stage and their other acts. So they kind of got it. And, um, and so it's like, if you can play the part that that's great, that like, of course, that's important. That's a, that's a baseline, but then we need to say, okay, who could we just hang, who do we want to just, just hang out with, whether they're in the band or not. And that, you know, it takes a little bit longer to figure out. And so, you know, we, we had some pretty deep debates for a while for, for some, some of the members that were, were auditioning, but at the end of the day, it was a very, we wanted to build consensus and make sure that everybody was able to be fully on board. And, and so sometimes that meant doing additional additions with people or, you know, having addition, just going out to eat with them and, and, and talking to them and seeing like who would really make that like appropriate fit. Well, wonderful. Well, th thanks for sharing that story. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a very different kind of audition from, <laughs> from what we do in theater. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, Again, there is a little bit of that personality, but it's mostly done within the the context of the singing and the scenes and the you know the regular audition just to see if we can do the role. So, yeah, that's a it's a very different process. I've certainly, <laughs> I think the most I've ever filled out is like maybe one page of Do you have any conflicts with the show? You know, with yeah, the show yeah. schedule. That that's that's about it. But um, yeah, yeah, it's mostly just name and address, and that's it. <laughs> No, we, I mean, and we would ask for things like, you know, um, videos of past performances and like, yeah. like standard kind of stuff. But I, it was also like, you know, what are your expectations? Like, what do you, what are you hoping to get from this? Mm -hmm. um, do you bring other skills to the table that aren't on stage? So, uh, cause I, it, it's like a band is like going into business, like with a bunch of partners who you may or may not know all that well. And mm -hmm. And, and the more skills that you have to, that people could bring to the table, the more helpful it is. Um, and 
you, you got to think like, are they also like fiscally responsible? Are they like just going to like party all the time? You know, uh, are they able to drive a bus? Cause like that was, we, we, we didn't have a full-time driver. We had a, this guy who drove a whole lot, but like we also took turns to, to make it fair to, yeah. to that person. So it was like, okay, like, can you do all those things? Like, yeah. do you, are you only looking out for number one? Like, oh, this is the equipment I brought. So I'm going to carry this in, have fun with everything else. Or are you the kind of person that says like, gonna I'm going to make sure. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. We we have those kind of they're called bus and truck tours, and so yeah. within yeah within theater where you're you're kind of a stage manager as well as a performer as well as a technician as well as maybe you're going to drive as well. I mean, you're you're kind of all things with the the, the tour requires. It's that's band living. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have Have you gotten to perform in China? Have you uh, or in, done any kind of Asian tour? Uh, we we toured Taiwan. Um, yeah, we, we were actually invited to play at this major festival in China. And then we were disinvited when they were, they asked us to not perform our songs that spoke highly of like pan Asian culture. Like we had, we have this one song, um, that says, you know, we sing for the Chinese and the Japanese and all the dirty knees. Can you see me? We sing in harmony. And they're like, we don't want that. <laughs> and I was so, like, so the fact that you lumped China in with all these other Asian countries, they just didn't like that. It, uh, it was, yeah, particularly during a time when there was a lot of tension between China and Japan, mm. and and we're like, well, you know, the experience for us is like we need to unite together, and and they thought it was too political, and so they, <laughs> and I was it's... like, well, we're not going to not play the song. <laughs> China's a funny country when it comes to the things that they allow or don't allow. It's it, it's it, it's interesting the the reports that I read about. Yeah, yeah, they're like, we just want you to play love songs. I'm like, this is not <laughs> like this is not what we're doing. Yeah. And so, we, but we did we we played uh, Taiwan. I actually want to go back there one day because it was just so much fun. We played across the island, and we were gonna do uh, Korean and Japanese. Japan tour as well, but uh, just didn't end up working out. <music> 